Hello, everyone. I told you I was going to get my dear friend Richard Saunders, <laughs> who, was, who was a few minutes ago named Brian Denning uh, on screen, my dear friend Richard Saunders to come and talk to us about the Great American, no, Great American, ooh, Great Australian mm -hmm. Psychic Prediction Project. Boy, that, boy, that's a tongue twister. And that was really a failure if we said American. Can you imagine what it would be like if it was American over 21 years? Australian for 21 years was enough. Oh my gosh. So we talked about this on the channel, on the video. If you haven't already watched that, you guys, it is a video I did and it is about um, Tarmagalis and a TV station called, uh, well, I can't remember what it's called, but the, the heading is Larry Probe. Probits. And I'm going to put it in the description underneath this video. This is the um, Chicago one. The Chicago one, right. right. So they brought up the Great Amer Great Australian Psychic Prediction Project. I'll get it. And he talks about it and just sums it up, man, in like 30, 30 seconds. He summed it up so beautifully. I thought that was really nice. So we're going to talk about that with my friend Richard. I'm not going to get into the methodology we're going to put links in the description that talks about the methodology. If you're really interested in how this happened, the nuts and bolts of it, but I want to talk about the psychic angle of it and more in that area. But before I start, Richard, if you give like a little snippet of who you are, and then I want to say um, that this project, the great Australian psychic prediction project was inspired, I believe, by our friend, James Randi, whose birthday's today. It's Randi's birthday. How about that? Why wow, don't we miss him? I mean, yes, you know, to many people, James Randi is this mythical character. But to you and I, he was a friend. And, you know, when a good friend goes, but yes, what an inspiration. Anyway, um, I'm a skeptical investigator. I've been very dedicated to skepticism for nearly a quarter of a century now. I've been president of the Australian Skeptics. I'm currently the chief investigator. So for yeah, nearly a quarter of a century, my background has been in investigating using scientific skepticism, claims of the paranormal, and supernatural. I also have a weekly podcast called the Skeptic Zone Podcast, which features Susan Gerbeck quite a lot. Quite a lot. And Susan, together with the team, helped me greatly in the Great Australian Psychic Prediction Project. We analyzed nearly 4,000 predictions made over a 21-year period to see how successful psychics and seers really are. We didn't do the project to debunk or to say, look, you know, we don't think people can see the future and we're going to prove it. No, we did the project to see what does the information tell us. And at the end of a huge effort, the information told us that people who claim to see the future using mystic methods are no better than people making guesses at the future. And there are many interesting reasons for that. You know, we, in the project, we go into why people don't seem to, to tell what the future is, what would happen if they did see the future, how information doesn't travel backwards in time to see the future, all sorts of interesting things. And if you want to read the report or have it read to you, mm -hmm. if you go to skepticzone.tv at the top of the page, click the link, sit back, and you can hear the report being read to you. And uh, I think it's quite a fascinating insight. Oh, I think I think it's brilliant. And you started this 21, 22 years ago. No, I actually started it in, in about... 2009 or 2010 mm. but we only finished it about a year and a half ago but the point is it covers a 21 year one year period in other words we were looking at predictions made since the beginning of the century and you looked all for 21 over years. australia right every method you could possibly find the yeah we were what published published predictions if if somebody published in a newspaper or a magazine on television, they said it on the radio, if it was published on their own websites and we had a capture of the website with the timestamp, that was all valid 
for us to enter into the database. And they were all Australian psychics. Yeah, 99.99%. I think there was one or two we included because they made very specific uh, predictions about Australia. But apart from that, yes, it was basically based in Australia. And you put this in a data database. You have yes. every uh, recording or screenshot of every single one of them. Yeah. So we could go back and look if we had to. If, Which means... I don't think it'll happen because it, it's a huge undertaking, as you know. If somebody came and said to us, oh, you skeptics, of course you, you, you would find this. I want to review your results. I would probably be tempted to say, well, here's all the raw data. Knock yourself out. Let's see what conclusions you come to. And after after a year, they'd probably just give up because it a was year. so much work. I think if they just glanced at how much work yeah. there is. And Thousands of files. It which means that you have to research thousands of instances of things happening or not happening. And did this happen? And was this there? And it was extraordinary. So you found that there were several different categories um, of the psychic predictions. I mean, some were too vague. Some were too, were not, were like a 50, 50 chance yeah. of it happening. Yeah. Some they predicted things that, we could never know or they're so far in the future that we don't have a result for yeah. and there were so many different ways you had to classify these things it wasn't just a straight up you know i predict this thing happening it, yeah. was, it was really um categories yes it, you would think that it's either something happened or it didn't which in many cases that was true we we would look up a prediction someone might predict that this person would become the president or this person would run for office or this person would, whatever the case may be. And then it was easy. Did they? Oh, let's go back into history. Let's see. In the year 2013, this person didn't win the, the election. That's easy. What was predicted? Okay, we can categorize that. Uh, but in many cases, we discovered that a lot of predictions didn't, didn't add up. They, they, were, they were vague, of a very vague nature. Uh, someone might be predicting for a celebrity i feel in their heart they're longing for home but the future lies ahead and sometimes they wonder if they've done the right thing but they'll find out soon it just we called it waffle <laughs> we, we called it waffle. the other category we had, we had which was um quite interesting is we had a category called expected so if psychics predicted and i kid you not there will be earthquakes in california it's hardly a, an amazing prediction. So we put those in the category of expected. In other words, of course, there's going to be earthquakes in California. What sort of prediction is this? It's ridiculous. And a very tiny amount, less than, I can't remember now, less than 1% or 2% or something like that, were what we said unknown. No, no matter how much research we did, we, can't, uh, we didn't find out whether this certain thing happened or not. But that's a tiny percentage of the predictions. But ultimately, as we said, as the, the data shows, people claiming mystical insights don't have mystical insights. That was amazing to me. And I think one of the, I mean, there were so many important parts of this of this um, um, whole project that I think were, that were, they were amazing. But what I really found interesting was when we went back and looked at, I think it was 10 different things that happened each of those 21 years right and then looked we said okay if you were psychic these things should have been predicted because there were major events they were uh, usually affected not only just one country but multiple countries yeah. in a lot of cases and it had a an effect on society like the challenger when, well, that, when that destructed and yeah yeah it's like he didn't mean, predict any of these things i thought that so was fascinating the the big tsunami way back was it in 2004 i mean the really big tsunami which killed hundreds of thousands of people that was a classic example uh either other uh, every year we had 10 examples of well why wasn't that this is a huge event this is earth shattering this is out of left field it right. should have been it michael have been jackson's things. death yeah, various How things. How do you like miss that? that? He and, was world known. 
but the, the for me the clincher was COVID nineteen, and in fact, <laughs> you you had a very good little project going where you would list all the psychics who had tour dates for 2020. Yeah. And they, other words, they had no clue there was they going had no to clue. And they would no plan clue. it. Yeah. Cancel. Okay. Then come back in and say, Oh, we're going to go back and we're going to do it on this day and then have to cancel it again. Because they were so, <laughs> they didn't know when I found, and I keep saying this, you know, I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around how in the hell did did this continue why in the world do we have psychics and mediums and all that when we've had covid it just seems like a no-brainer right because how people could, have how could, this was the this was the test I know. the I big know. test i know it's it, so does, it, doesn't, failed. it doesn't matter susan people will will keep believing no matter what no yeah, matter what well, they're and invested in it there are and, and it's it's a big point to make is that skeptics are categorized as people with closed minds who can't change their opinion <laughs> we live in a mirror world because skeptics will and do change their opinion they have open minds that's why we did the project to see what was really happening mm -hmm. and it turns out that the people who are the firm believers are so shut in their closed mind you can't unpack it right no matter what happens they'll keep believing so i i, I like to make the point that you know, it's it's all wrong. The believers have closed minded. The skeptics are the true ones with the open mind. Oh, I I'd, I'd love to have psychic abilities out there. Oh my gosh, mediumship! Wow, I have a list of people I'd like to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, Ooh, I'm a his, I'm a history historian by degree my my degree, and yeah, but I find history fascinating. I Man, there is a list of people that would. Oh, let's let's yeah, talk. I want to yeah. know the truth about this. Tell me about yeah. this. Well, would you say say this is true, and you managed to tap into somebody in the court of King Henry the mm Eighth? -hmm. Would they tell you the truth, or would they lie like humans do? Well, I would have to talk to multiple people yeah. in King Henry the Eighth's time. I wouldn't be just talking to good old Henry. I'd talk to all of them. I mean, if you could talk to one, you should be able to talk to them all. I mean, well, that's true, I suppose. I mean, come on, it, it just it might take a little time and, and encouragement. <laughs> I mean, it's just silly. It's, but you know, I think, and my good friend um, Janice Boynton, who does facilitated communication, as you well know, we believe that it at a certain point, a person cannot get out of this belief system because they've invested too much. They already are communicating with somebody who has told them mom i love you so much i forgive you um mom you know please you know all these statements that they that they'll make to the person and they're convinced and facilitating communication the person they're communicating with is alive but there are people who are profoundly um not able to communicate in in like a way like we're doing right now and they say, mom, I, you know, I'm so proud of you. I love you. And so on and so on and so on. At that point, it, it, you're so invested in it that it really becomes difficult to say, finally to say, oh my gosh, this was all a lie. Uh, everything they said to me was a lie. All that wasted money, all that wasted time. Cognitively, you, you're just easier just to say, no, no, that's all a lie. Let's, 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 no, blinders on. Yeah, but we also have to be careful with the shortcut word lie, because in many cases, as we've discovered, it's more accurate to say it's not the truth than a lie, because a lie implies knowing decept deception, mm -hmm. whereas, as we've discovered, many people out there who give who, who think they're psychic really think they're psychic. So to them when they do the tarot or the palm reading or whatever it is, they're imparting what they think is the truth. Very it's true. not true. You see, you you're know? so much wiser than I am. Um, so Even that's, that's a, a tricky, yeah, it's a tricky one. <laughs> and that's why we have to treat individual people who claim psychic power, we have to size them up and, and try to get, get our best understanding. Are they scamming scammers? And, you, and you know, we know the signs. Or are they sincerely deluded? So far, that those are the only two categories we've ever discovered. 
We have there has never ever been a case of discovering the real psychic. It hasn't happened. Right. It hasn't happened. I think that's what's going on with people. They seem to think that there have been, or they would say, Oh yeah. Somebody has predicted COVID, of course. Or yeah, somebody yeah. has solved a case with a psychic detective. Yeah. Of course that's happened. Why else would they be on TV? Why yeah. else would they be allowed um to be able to be on the morning television shows? Why else would they be writing books or promoted by celebrities? Of course there are people out there who believe who do this stuff. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because when these people appear on television shows in a little title under their name will say so and so and so psychic as if it's a fact yeah yeah we've been doing this for a long time richard between the two of us <laughs> and our other friends what do you think about the job we've been doing is it helping are we getting anywhere with this what do you think about that on this day of james randy's birthday yeah. that's what i want to think about today is um yes but we have to realize this is the long game and it's a generational game i was we're just saying this on another video and i quoted you tell me tell me what you're going to say i know what you're going to say go ahead i i know what you're going to say <laughs> we can't win at the moment we can make we can have our victories, but if we all give up, we lose big time. Mm -hmm. And when I say it's a generational game, it's um, I guess the analogy is all religions have a life a lifespan. They don't just end overnight. You know, they waver and sort of die out as the people who believe firmly die in the next generation. Yeah, I don't quite believe in that. I think it'll take. It'll probably take a very long time. I can't envisage how long it'll take, but eventually our society will move away from, you know, as Randy would say, woo-woo and superstition and things like that. I can't put a time frame on it. I have no idea how long that'll take. Uh, I do it for pure interest. I do it because I do think I am helping people, especially people who, when they realize they've been scammed and conned, they're looking for something else. They're looking for a bit of solace. They need somebody to understand not somebody to say, oh, you're silly. How could you fall for that? That's psychic. It's so stupid. They, they need somebody to say, look, it's all right. You know, these people are good at what they do. This is why you've been sucked in the psychological reasons for it. Um, nothing to be ashamed of, you know. We have had an impact. impact. I, I, I truly believe that. And I think back on where we would be if we had not done this, not just you and I, but people like Randy and other people, where would we be if this was not, you know, we everything was credulous, you know, you could just believe whatever. And no well, I, we'd would have, we'd back. have to run for politics, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. No, but, but apart from that, it, 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 it's an awful lot of fun. I mean, we have a good time. We really have good times. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, I've been doing this for so long now. I've, I've got a certain, what shall I say, a skill set and knowledge. Oh, a psychic sense. A psychic sense. It's hard to, it's hard to, to put, know what I would do. Here's an interesting thing that happened to me. A couple of days here in San Francisco, I'm, I'm in the, uh, the Bay Area at the moment, and down in Japan, uh, Japantown, they had a little festival. And the owner of Paper Tree Origami Store knew I was in town, said, please come down. We'd love to see you. So I thought, yeah, okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm an origami expert. I've written books yeah, on it. Sure is. So I turn up, and for that day, I wasn't Richard Saunders. Oh, I wasn't Richard Saunders, the skeptic and the investigator. I was Richard Saunders, the origami, the international origami expert. I sat at a table in Japantown, had people come by, lots of kids made lots of origami for everybody. Went to the big stage, made a giant origami out of 18-foot paper. It was ridiculous. And then as I was packing up and it was really nice, somebody came up to me and said, uh, excuse me, yeah, are you Richard Saunders? I said, yes. I know your voice from the podcast. <laughs> worlds so the, collide. Worlds collide. So, but that, that was really nice, yeah. But, yes, yeah, so you were just showing the origami Pegasus. That's the worlds colliding. That's skepticism and origami in one. It's, I hold it up to the hold it up to the camera. I invented that for James Randy. He it's asked me big. to make that, and I invented that. So that's a tribute to him. Isn't that great? Well, mm. now this one, 
right now is got like a covering on it so it's yeah stiff, so you can't touch it and squeeze it yeah. or anything like that but it's he sits right here with me and we we hang out and and it's got your signature on the back 2015 it says on there but 15 you can find, wow, how about that? You can find richard's uh jewelry on his website can you plug that real quick if I'm um not not at the moment no because i'm still getting stock together oh. and uh, i will be looking into selling the jewelry but, but that's okay and i was just sure, thinking I'm wearing all mine right now i've noticed that if i wear necklaces or anything you can't even see it because i'm not even if, <laughs> if people want to learn how to make the flying pig if they if they type in origami flying pig or origami pigasus into youtube my video comes up and i'll teach you how to do it he's he's amazing um you know i want to ask we we haven't gotten that far for some reason you and i tend to talk mm. as we're old friends but going back to the g a p p p the great yes, australian, the great australian like prediction prediction project, project, yeah. yes. going back to that what are the percentages what did you find go ahead and spoil it for everybody well you've got me on the hop i haven't got them in front of me let me i remember you you might have, just you, gen you, in general generally okay we the had the Saunders number. number, didn't we the have Saunders a Saunders number? The, number? Okay, the key number, the key number, and I think it's the most important number of the whole prediction is the predict the the, the percentage of predictions out of three thousand eight hundred eleven nine about uh, ten point nine. So we rounded up to eleven. Eleven percent of predictions we deemed to have come true. Eleven percent. These are people who claim to have mystical special powers better than you and I into seeing future events. If they can only get 11% collectively correct, it's pathetic. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It's nonsense. It's rubbish. It's You ask the kids in the playground to make wild predictions about the future. You'd probably get 11%. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the things we did during the project is we had lots of Random people and skeptics give predictions, and they got better than 11% for that year anyway. And it means that if you're paying money to somebody who claims that they can see the future, be skeptical. Yeah. And as we've written in the report, there are very good reasons as to why we don't think it is possible to see future events. Namely, they haven't happened yet. <laughs> and apart from that, science tells us quite clearly you cannot send information backwards in time. And in the project, we look into the, what the world would be like if people could see the future. Mm -hmm. There would be no horse racing, no casinos. Why would you play sporting matches? Mm -hmm. it, our society would be completely different. Right. Just imagine. People, think of it that way. What would it be like? What would it be like? like? Speak to the dead. What would the society be what like? What would it be like? We wouldn't have <laughs> lawyers and judges. I mean, because yeah. you just asked somebody, we're... <laughs> Who did it to you? Who did it? <laughs> Who, Who was that again? To? <laughs> you know, I mean, we wouldn't have missing people out there. We would just contact somebody and say, where are they? You know, I know all the evidence says you did the murder, but, oh, my spirit guide's saying it wasn't you. Okay, acquitted. Goodbye. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you, you got you to gotta think about it this way, yeah. people. It's not. Uh, and also think about it, as I said. Rules. You think, think about it as. I guess I can think about these things because I'm getting older now. You know, you, I've I've lived a few years, and you start to to see history and the and things take time. The wheels of time turn slowly, and as as our society changes, these things will simply eventually just go out of fashion in the way we we view things. It'll happen with the UFOs one day. You know, one day we'll be so sophisticated with our own flying technology that UFOs will seem pathetic. Just like, really? I mean, even in the movie Independence Day, the fighter jets were beating the UFOs. I don't know. You know, when you, when you, I know that 10.9%, the 11%, yeah. the Saunders number. Um, I remember they, that if we took out some of the things that were like 50 50 shots, like, Who's going to win the election? There's only two people running. Who's going to yeah. win the the sports event? There's only two groups winning. You know that are that are possible. If we took yeah. those numbers out, then it went down to like nine percent or yeah. We lower, we had I think. we we had some arguments 
in the in the, in the project, which was a very healthy sign. We didn't all agree on everything. Oh yeah, we had oh, yeah. arguments. <laughs> and <laughs> we were polite. We didn't. We were polite, blows, especially since but we certainly food. didn't agree. And some people thought we were far too generous with our eleven percent. We did too generous. Too, too generous, but I. But it's all documented, so. It's all documented, and you know, there's arguments either way. But as I said in in the report, even allowing for a margin of error, a, a, a healthy margin of error, even you know, being generous, it still wouldn't show that psychics could uh, visualize the future and see right. what's going. On. And what's you know, if you're going to get your car worked on or a plumber or electrician or somebody's going to perform surgery on you and they're only going to be accurate 11 percent of the time <laughs> think about that would you go and have your surgery done by somebody who's only would you allow a pilot who's only you know chances of staying in the air are 11 percent what <laughs> uh, what we did which was really important is that we collected every prediction we found and entered them into the database. When psychics like to talk about how good they are with mm -hmm. predicting the future, do you think they're going to mention all the ones they got wrong? No. They'll say, oh, look, I predicted this, this, and this. Not saying, but I got this, 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 this wrong. They're not going to say that. What's missing? That's what I say on my channel all the time. What is missing? What's what are missing? we missing here in this? Now, so on my channel, Psychics Explained, or Psychic Sex Explained. <laughs> Crazy. Maybe people remember it better that way. On my channel, we really focus on mediumship. That is the that is the nuts and bolts of my show. Of course, I'm interested in all kinds of things, paranormal and psychics and so on, but we don't really focus on psychics necessarily because the definition of a psychic is a medium is a psychic but not all psychics are mediums yes That's so right. if you're a, if you're a medium you yeah. you also are psychic Ye and yes <laughs> but not all psychics. i'm just thinking about i'm thinking about definitions it's possible you could someone could claim to be psychic and they would get senses about what's happening in the future or they well, could they're psychic the old term mind reading you never hear that term oh anymore. yeah that's okay but so, um, so if a person is communicating with the dead they're a medium they're a medium yeah. that's mediumship it's and mediumship. that is different than making predictions about the future yes unless they unless say they do. <laughs> unless they're saying that they're, they're getting their information from dead people or spirits about the future which well, is they possible. Do. They'll say, I'm not a psychic. I'm not really doing psychic stuff today. I'm not really predicting the future. But when you listen to the readings, they tend to say, he's watching over you. He's keeping, yeah. uh, he, yeah, he yeah. you know, he knows that there's going to be a, some good things happening to you. He knows, you know, they start getting into the psychic stuff. I mean, it might not be so specific, yeah. but they will. They'll say, um, I... You know, your your daughter is doing well in school, but she's having some complications. Hope you know she's going to be starting to figure yeah. that out. We, we, we said we generally we would yeah. We, we said we wouldn't get into the technical st stuff, but there's a lot yeah. of standard things. I'm, I'm researching a fellow at the moment. His standard routine is to to have somebody a sitter. And, and the people who go to psychics, they're looking for answers. They're looking for psychic experience and whatever. And they usually are believing in the spirit. And he'll say, I, I can, I'm sensing your spirit guide. It's your, it's your great grandmother on your father's side. And she's here. She's with you. And that's enough to bring people to tears. Oh, yeah, right away. That'll do well, it. All, all you got to do is just pull out the box of Kleenex and say, yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> And if that's, that's done on floodgates are open now. If that's done on TV and the hosts are a little tear because they can see how visually, uh, visually they can see uh, emotionally. I meant how emotional the sit the people in the, the audience are, and the, and they're sold. That's it. Game over. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can say as a skeptic which will make any inroad or impact. They really think that this person has tapped in because even before. As I said, they're prime. They think this person's psychic anyway. 
Yeah, well, they're on TV. Why would it, why would somebody be on TV if they weren't really? And why would somebody lie? And why would they lie? I yeah. just had today, I had somebody comment on my YouTube channel. They said, um, they were talking about a psychic that I've talked about a zillion times. And they said, I don't know this guy, but I do know that there are genuine mediums out there. And then the person goes on to tell me that they had a reading done back in the day before the internet. And this psychic told them all this information and gave and went through like enlisted all this detailed information the psyche told them and so therefore somebody's real and i went back and i responded i said well that must have been decades ago <laughs> and do you have a reading uh, uh, anything of it and and of course they don't have any copy they're going off of their memory so yeah. those mediumship there's it's a lot of verbal um finagling you know going yeah. on and so when they say they said this date they gave me a date that something was going to happen well they didn't probably say on march 2nd 2012 this will happen and this specific thing will happen they just said you know in the in the next six months something interesting is going to happen to you it, and then your it, memory makes it so that it was that specific thing and i'm yeah, like come it's on important. lady you know it's decades ago Give me a break. You it's, can't. Um, uh -uh. it's counterintuitive and it's hard to accept, but you cannot rely on your memory. Memories do not work that way. We know right. this very well. They work enough to get us by in life. And that, and it's, you know, our brains have evolved to get us by so we can have children and, and, and carry on and whatever. Mm -hmm. And we live in a very complex world. But our memory can be played with. It can be wrong. You can misremember. You can fool yourself. And that's one of the things that science has shown us. That's why scientists write things down. You know, it's it's important to to, to catalog and, and record these things because your memory is untrustworthy. It's nothing bad. It's it's the way it's designed. It's you know, it's it's just the way it is. Well, you know, and also we're we're social animals, so yes. we're we're storytellers. And so that if you're telling somebody, oh, I have had a reading in the past and it was genuine and here's all the things she told. Well, the story gets more and more creative as time goes on because you retell it over ah. and over, it messes with your memory. And plus, it's it's a much better story. It's you, better. you must you must have seen one of my talks. I talk about this reinforcement cycle. Yes. Yeah. Well, I've seen <laughs> probably all your talks, but it was interesting that the woman came at me with. There's no way this person could have known this information about me because it was 30 years ago. And I'm saying, and I wrote back to her, I said, well, most psychics do not hot read knowing something ahead of people ahead of time. Most psychics rely on something called cold reading. Yeah. And so it's unlikely the psychic would have known, needed to know any of that, especially if you just are so motivated to just believe everything yeah. they say you know and you'll, you'll embellish it in your own memory embellish it over time and that's yep. it's there's Again, nothing wrong with that that's what no, we do this is what We're we human. do we've been evolved to do this it's great it's fine it, that's the way things work but it can be taken advantage of understand it and i think that, yeah. that personally i think there's so much more that is interesting about the science of mediumship and i say science meaning that like the why we believe this stuff why are we uh why are we doing these kinds of um same with all of the paranormal you know um why is it that we have these dreams that are so vivid why is it that we wake up and we feel like there's somebody in the room with us when there's nobody in the room with us those things are so much more <laughs> those things are so much more interesting the reasons the answers than you know same with the ufos whenever uh uh mick west talks about one of he deconstructs one of these ufo videos or uap videos and he shows how it is that that we misperceive we're not we're not seeing what we think we yeah see. yeah nothing and to be ashamed of the data the actual data he's like this yeah. is just geometry it's it's yeah. anybody who wants to do the math they can figure this out for themselves but no no it's easy. i don't remember any math like that i didn't have geometry in high school so sorry but I think that's much more interesting. Um, yes, but but if you don't find that side very interesting, that's okay. We're all different. That's all right. But 
I guess another message that we we say is, well, think about it from a, a point of view of consumer affairs. You're paying mm -hmm. for a psychic reading. You are parting with your money for a service. The service you're paying for is called a psychic reading. If you're not getting that, if you're getting psychological trickery instead, Ooh, that's good. then it's consumer affairs. Right. This this person can be prosecuted for not delivering the the service they are advertised and charging. Except that, of course, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. But that's it, it. Think about that point. Think about that point. That is a very good point. You are not only spending your money on it, but a lot of these people are wasting a lot of time because they have to go for months sometimes to get a reading with somebody, if not months, a years. They get on a wait list. Yeah. Yeah. And during that time. You know, you want your answers, you're waiting, you yeah. wait a year. By the time you finally get your reading, you're already motivated to believe that anything they say have waited a year. Well, there's a there's a somebody in Australia who calls himself psychic at the moment who's come to our attention who says he charges eight hundred dollars an hour. And and five years waiting list, right? Or three years waiting list. Whether either of these things are true or not, yeah, I don't I, know. I'm not they so could sure be. I believe that. It's that's it's just what he said. I, Who's gonna it, check? But it, it could be true. I don't know. But would there be people willing to pay eight hundred dollars an hour? Probably. Now that he's been on TV twice. Right. And I'm not, I'm cheap. I'm very cheap. I will turn up and uh, in fact I'll I'll give you a dollar to turn up and do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll even fold you an origami pig. He'll there. even fold you some. Not even a pigasus. He'll fold you some of the most amazing things he does. Well, I think that's enough. Everybody's going to be thrilled that I finally got a chance to sit down and talk with you. I know you're super busy, Richard, so I really appreciate it. There. Oh, now that's a much better uh, image than mine. Isn't that beautiful? Let me show you one more thing, which is another wonderful piece of origami. I didn't invent this. I wish I did, which is a collision between my two worlds, which is skepticism and origami. And I guess magic too, because magic. I learned a lot of. I know which magic. one you're going to show. Yeah. I cyclically know which one you're going to show. So this is a nice bit of origami. It's a it's a top hat origami. Doesn't that look great? And what happens with a top hat when there's a magician, Susan? There's a rabbit. Pops out. Isn't it? I love that. That's one of my favorite ones that he makes. I have I have one of these of yours. It's just it's just so cool. It's like beautifully done motion origami. It's lovely, yeah. Motion, origami and motion. So you guys seriously out there, think about this. There are people in this world, Richard and I and others, that have spent so much time on this. So if you've gone online and you've watched one psychic on TV who's claiming to speak to the dead, some medium, or you follow a psychic on YouTube or TikTok or whatever who's making predictions about the year, really think about it. It's not, I mean, people, there are people out there who spend a lot of time thinking about it, looking into it, doing the, the research. And it's, it's um, we haven't found anything. I'd like no, to and, there and anything out there to find, I don't think. We, we don't, as Brandy says, he didn't like the word debunker. We don't go in to prove these people are charlatans or they cannot do it. With rare exceptions. There are some we know, we all know, yeah, the yeah. con artists in the, out there. But we, seriously, we give people every every opportunity. And we try to be polite and fair about it. And if they don't come up to scratch, it's not our fault. You know, the person making the claim is the one who needs to be, the yeah. wilder the claim, the more evidence we need. We just can't, it's not like, you know, 50-50. <laughs> anyway, Richard, thank you so much. Thank I really you, appreciate it. I, um, I wish I could see you. I don't know if that's going to happen, but, you know, you're right here on Zoom. I see you, and um, it's so great to be able to call you up and, and have a conversation with you and see you on Facebook and um twitter or wherever else yeah we're, we're 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 buddies from a long way back it's been it's really good it's great you guys and if you want to get to know richard saunders please reach out um look at his channels he's got um this podcast that's on every week it's a magazine Skeptic, style it's Skeptic wonderful Zone. 
the skeptic just look, zone. Just Google the skeptic zone and you'll find me. And it's not just about Australia. It's becoming more and more. Convincing. And Susan's on it nearly every week. Adrian Hill, who you, who's right. also been on my channel here on yep. uh, YouTube. She is one of the reporters who's been doing a lot. And of it's, it's the only podcast that has a skeptical, uh, an internet. I never get this right. The skeptical fairy godmother angel from the internet. Yes. Yes, the tooth fairy. She used to be the tooth. She fairy. used to be the tooth fairy, and now she buys maple syrup. It all makes sense, <laughs> folks, when you listen to the podcast. <laughs> hey, we even have cats, so I mean, how can you avoid this? And <laughs> the occasional dog might show up once in a while. Anyway, you never know. You never know. Thank you so much, Richard.